let everybody ears and eyes be open to receive something today. Yeah. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Amen. 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 Max volume, that's it, that'll work. <laughs>
the power that work in the power that work in the power that work in the power that in the power that work the Anytime you're doing something right for the Lord, the enemy always tries to distract. Oh, yeah. And with the internet and stuff, that's a distraction. If you don't think the enemy can't come through something like that to bring distractions, he can. Uh, you get in a church service, it's moving. The people are just being touched and blessed and the Spirit of God's moving. All of a sudden, lights go out, sound system shuts down. You get a big squelch in the microphone it's all distractions and you think well that just happens but no the enemy comes through stuff like that and tries to distract and take your attention off of jesus and put it on the storm or the circumstance or whatever's going on around you so uh before we get into the lesson i want to do i want to be obedient to the lord jesus said in in matthew 11 28 through 30. He said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Amen. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now, come here a minute, Josh. So, I want y'all to just stretch your hands this way. And this morning I'm going to pray for Josh because I'm going to be obedient to the Lord. All right? Because when I walked into this place this morning, a, a, a lot of times because y'all are so busy, you don't really see what's taking place, but I felt the heaviness. So we're going to break that. Amen. So Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the work that's being done here. I thank you, Father, for the life for your life that's in Josh, that's in this ministry, that's in this business. I thank you for the people that you have sent his way. Father, that he can be the light of Jesus to these men that come in and out of this shop, Father. For the ones that he touches throughout the cities and surrounding areas, Father. I thank you that your life is in him. That it's no longer him that lives, but Christ that lives in him. And I thank you, Father, this morning that you give us a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And I thank you, Father, that even from this moment on throughout this day, that Josh will find himself praising you, Father, that he'll know that you have placed that garment of praise upon him, that he don't have to carry the burden, he don't have to carry the load, 
but Father, that he can cast all this on you yes. and rest in you, Father. Yes. And I thank you that that's broken right now. I thank you for his life. I thank you for his walk. And I thank you for your blessings that are overtaking him in Jesus' name. Jesus. Yes. Amen. 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 Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> now, I feel that. It's lighter. Did y'all feel that lift? Yes. It's gone. You know, Josh made the statement that it's quiet in here this morning. That was the heaviness. That's what you felt. And yes, it was very quiet. So... Uh, let's jump in this morning. We are on, well, I don't know what page you're on. We're at the head, the top of the page says like Jesus. Yeah, I got it. Okay. So, uh, we've talked about a lot. Why did Jesus heal? How did Jesus heal? How much information did Jesus need to heal? Uh, and we've answered those questions. So I want to point to this this morning, that we have to be like Jesus. Uh, it is enough that the servant be as his master. Page 52. Okay. Matthew 10, 23 through 25. So just to let you know. Go ahead. Pastor boy. So the last few days we've been watching a Crepo Dollar video with this exact scripture about being a servant. Wow. Amen. Yeah, this wow. Video, of course. Of course, probably by design, this guy here, but, I mean, it was a fire video, so he's, I'm just letting you know, pastor's laying some groundwork for you. When you That's you, awesome. I love you that. See, and see God's orchestrating all of this. So, that's, that's, that's the beauty of the Father. So, he knows where we're at and what we need for where we're at. That's right. So, Matthew 10, 23 through 25 says, but when they persecute you in this city... Uh, here's my question. Okay. Has anybody ever, has anybody in here ever been persecuted because you're a Christian? Oh, yeah. 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 So, uh, well, you, you know what? Keep that comment to myself. <laughs> ne ne never I would have to flee a city, though, yeah. Right. Yeah. A lot of it comes from... People in the church a lot of times. Right. Church folks. Yeah. You know, even in Jesus' ministry. Oh, yeah. When he preached his first sermon, they want to throw him off a cliff. Right. You know what I mean? And you get that a lot. Fake Christian, send us something that start going their way, or they hear something they don't necessarily 100% agree with, they want to kill you. Right. You know. So. Right. Or debate, it is, it is, like, or debate, yeah. or argue, or fight, or, yeah. Uh, you just got to stay focused and realize, you know, the enemy's coming after the seed. Right. You know, and ultimately it's love. Uh, if he can come against our love wall, then he can discredit our testimony. He can shut down the power of God. Because like we were just talking, if we get in a fence, if we get out of love and get in a fence, right. no vision, no power. So we just got to, like you said, distractions. You know, keep our eye on Jesus. Right. You know? Keep going forward. I, you know, it's, it's funny. Uh I was, I was debating within myself whether I wanted to share this testimony or not. Two days ago, I got, well, anytime I get a phone call, I answer because I like to tell people about Jesus. I don't care if it's a scam, spam, whatever. They're trying to sell me something. I, I always tell them, I'm not interested in what you're selling, but let's talk about Jesus. Or can I pray for you? Well, a lot of times they hang up. I love it when they go, hey, I have some good news for you. You're like, buddy, I got some I, good news for you. <laughs> right. Or, or they go, have you heard the good news? I'm like, yeah. Yes, I <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's, a, it's a great opportunity to share Jesus. And this man calls me uh, two days ago, um, and he wanted to sell me, so I don't remember what he was selling. And uh, I said, let's talk about Jesus. And, uh, and he got real quiet for a moment. And, and then he said, well, I'm a Muslim. I said, you know what? I said, that's great. I said, the beauty of the Father is that he sent Jesus to die for all the world, not just a few people. I said, and so then I went into telling him about Jesus and what Jesus did. Well, he said, and then he said, well, we respect Jesus as a prophet. I said, that's great. I said, but he's more than a prophet. And, and I was able to share the gospel of Jesus with this man. I offered him Jesus. 
I told him three times the kingdom of God has come near to you. I offered him Jesus. When, when the drawing was there for him to submit and say yes to Jesus, he had to get off the phone. And, and, and it was that quick. He's like, and, and, he, and he hung up. So, but a seed was planted. So, all right. That was great. It was a great testimony. I loved it because it, it really put joy in my heart. I planted a seed. I got other people to pray for that, that that seed would grow. Now, fast forward to yesterday. I get a call. This guy says uh, uh, something about Medicaid. And he's real nice and everything. I said, uh, I said, I don't, I don't have, he said, you have Medicaid, right? I said, no, I don't have Medicaid. As soon as I said, no, I don't have Medicaid, he said, well, I ain't going to say what he said, but he started cussing me. And then he started telling me what he did with my daughter last night and what he did with my wife last night. And just went into this, I mean, just awful. Just, I said, look, I said, uh, let's talk about Jesus. Let's pray. And, and he's just going off and just cussing. And now I did one thing I shouldn't have done. I, I said, I, I called him a Pakistani. He was probably Indian. He got mad about that. All right. I repent of that. I shouldn't. And so he got mad about that. But he's like, uh, he called American stupid. And he's just, I mean, he's just attacking me. And. So I said, look, let's pray. Let's talk about Jesus. He said, I don't believe in Jesus. So I said, okay, then go to hell. And that was it. That was the end of the conversation. Because I had just read. Now, I recognize that as an attack from the enemy, right? Because of what I'd done the day before. And what I like to do when people call me. Right? This, now, why am I telling you this? Because when you start doing like Jesus, some people are going to reject you. You can get offended and let it stop you. Or you can keep going forward to the next one that wants what you got. And I recognize that as an attack from the enemy because I do like to answer the calls and tell people about Jesus. So the enemy put somebody on the other end to attack me to see how I would handle that. For the most part, I handled it good. I, one thing I did, I shouldn't have. But, you know, it's not going to stop me. I'm waiting on another call. Next call comes through, I'm going to tell them about Jesus. Now, why did I tell them to go to hell? Because I had just read a testimony about Lester Sumrall. When he was 18 years old, he was preaching to some young people. They said, Come over here and talk to this girl. She don't want nothing to do with Jesus. He goes over to this girl. She's the same age, 17, 18. She's like, he's telling her about Jesus. She don't want nothing to do with it. He looked at her and he said, go to hell. She fell over, passed out. When she came to, she gave her life to the Lord. Because nobody had ever talked to her like that. But he told her, he said, there's two choices. There's heaven or there's hell. And you're going to go to one of them. He wasn't being derogatory. He wasn't being ugly. And I wasn't being ugly to that guy yesterday. But he had two choices. Let's talk about Jesus. I'll point you to heaven through Jesus or go to hell. Plain and simple. Amen. Christianity is not the flu flu fluff that the church has made it out to be. Jesus was not no wimpy man. He went in the temple and turned over the tables and drove the people out because they made his house a house of thieves, a den of thieves, instead of what God called it to be. So uh, that's a good segue into being like Jesus. <laughs> if you want to know where I stand, you know where I stand now. I am not a pushover, foo-foo, fluffy, fluffy Christian. I'm going to stand my ground. The enemy has no place in my life. And I'm going to drive them out, whatever it takes. So, Amen. Amen. We are to do that with sickness, disease, addiction, whatever. Uh, that's a lot I can say. But when they persecute you in this city, flee into another. For verily I say unto you, you shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come. The disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his Lord. It is enough. I want you to hear this. 
Because we often look over these little words. It is enough. Well, I don't have enough. I don't know enough. I'm just not, I, I, it's just not enough there yet. Oh yeah, it is enough for the disciple that he be as his master and the servant as his Lord. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more shall they call them of his household? I have been cussed out. I have been mocked. I have been laughed at. I have been called many things in 27 years of being in the Lord. I've had people throw stuff at me. So, you know, they did it to Jesus. If you're preaching the gospel, if you're living for Jesus, they're going to do it to you. They hurt my feelings because they didn't speak to me. That's not persecution. They, they filleted me alive. They burnt me at the stake. They cut my head off. That's persecution, right? It's a difference there. Right? They put me in prison. I'm sorry, man. Go ahead. Go ahead. You done raised your hand six times. <laughs> I just wonder the difference between a disciple and a servant and a master. Jesus is the master. Amen. We are a disciple and a servant. And we're both. Right. We are God's son, man's servant, and the devil's master. That's who we are. We are God's son, man's servant, and the devil's master. So, John Lake said that. That don't that didn't come from me. <laughs> so, uh, so, anyway, let's look at Luke 6, 39 and 40. And he spoke a parable unto them. Can the blind lead the blind? Shall they not both fall into the ditch? The disciple is not above his master, but everyone that is perfect shall be as his master. Again, Jesus is our master. He is our Lord. And it's funny because we call him Lord, yet we don't do what he... Well, anyway, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do the things I told you to do? So, uh, man, there's so much. Uh, let's look at Ephesians 4, 11 through 15. This is discipline, Chris. I have to stay off that trail. Cause there's, a, there's a lot of ways I could go with this, yeah. but uh, let's just stick to this. Hmm. It says, And he gave some apostles and some prophets. We're in Ephesians 4, uh, chapter 4, verses 11 through 15. And he gave some apostles and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. Why? To put them on a, spe a pedestal and call them special. Right? That's why you got bishop so-and-so, and apostle so-and-so, and pastor so-and-so, and, and the great evangelist, and, and the, you know, so that we can put them on a pedestal and idolize them. Is that what the Bible says? No. But that is what we do. To equip the saints. But, in all honesty, okay, if we're being honest this morning, I'm guilty just as like everybody else. When I was young in the Lord, I put this one on a pedestal because I wanted to be like that one. And then I found this one, I put him on a pedestal because I wanted to be like that one. I put this one on a pedestal because, man, I really like his teaching, I want to be like that one. We all do that. At some point or another, we all do that. Since I've grown and matured more, I want to be like Jesus. He's the only special one. He's the only one that's perfect. He's the only one I want to be like. I love to listen to other men and women of God. Uh, not so much anymore, but I did. I, you got to limit your streams. Because the more streams you have, the more confusion you have. If you're listening to six different people preach, there's going to be a lot of confusion in your life. All right? I'm just telling you. Because it sounds good, because it's emotional, because, you know, you need to narrow your stream down. So I, I don't know who that's for, but that's for you. So, for, why? Why did, why did God set these in the church? For the perfecting of the saints. For the work of the ministry. For the edifying of the body of Christ. 
till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Now, it's, it, it, when I was young in the Lord, I was tossed to and fro, just like I was just saying. I wanted to be like this one and like this one, and I like their preaching, and I like the way they teach, and I like the way they do this. And, and I was being tossed to and fro. With every wind of doctrine, every, this sounds good, that sounds good, that sounds right, I'm sure this is right, and, and you're tossed to and fro. At some point, you've got to grow up, you've got you to mature in the Lord, and realize that you've got to be solid, unmovable, unshakable, stand firm. Don't be moved just because everybody's excited about this teaching over here that seems to be something new in the church. It's really not. It's just making it cycle through the church again. It's passed down from generations. It's wrong. You can't be tossed over there. And now all of a sudden they're teaching over here. There's no hell. Oh, that sounds good. I like the fact there's no hell. Let's be tossed over here to this. Well, I can tell you there is a hell. End of story. So, uh, but, again, this sounds good. Oh, generational curses? Yeah, oh, that sounds great. Now I'm tossed over here to another false teaching. Oh, this, te so you see what I'm saying? You, you get a hold of every wind of doctrine, you toss to and fro, at some point you got to be yeah. solid. Go ahead, Chris. It reminds me of James, where it talks about the double-minded man. Yes. He's unstable in all his ways. It's like the movement. Right. But like you said, Jesus is our example. He's the Word. So if you don't see him operating in it, and you don't see it in here, right? you don't have two or three witnesses that are constant and consistent in the Word, then you really have no basis for what you're teaching or what you're hearing. Right. You know, so always go back. And then, I think it's great, and, and we talked about this a couple weeks ago, or maybe it was last week, about having a covering. Yeah. The Bible says in a multitude of counsel, there's safety. And some people say that's talking about counselors, but I believe it's talking about people that are mature in the faith right. that you can go to and say, hey, what do you think about this? That's right. And you know, and have two or three, and people that are mature in the Lord, that's been walking with the Lord, you know, 15, 20 years, they're solidified, so you know you're going to get a good, and you always want people to show you in the Word. Right. Not I feel or I believe. That's right. What does the Word say? Yeah. You know, so. That's, what, that's why my Bible goes with me everywhere. Not that I don't know it, but there's a lot of it I don't know. I'd rather show you. Let's open it up and look at it together. Yeah. And now you explain it to me. Explain to me what you were just saying according to the Word of God. Most people can't, you know, because you see the truth. This is the truth. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, so, uh, and it's good to have a covering. But see that, uh, again, this is where the church is. I know I sound like I'm against the church. I'm not against the church. I'm against the traditions of men the doctrines that have been passed down that are wrong, okay? Church is a good place. You need to be part of a family. But discipleship has not been a big part of the church. And because we have failed in the area of discipleship, people are not solid, you know? And you get two hours of, you get two hours of church a week, and then you get the rest of the time of the world. No way you're going to walk like Christ. There's no, there's no way with only a Sunday service and maybe a Wednesday night that you're ever going to walk like Christ if the rest of the time you're being bombarded by the world. No way. Because your mind's being renewed either to the Word of God or to the world. So, I, I know a lot of this stuff is coming out harsh. But it's time Christians grew up and started acting like Jesus. Just plain and simple. I mean, the time is short. Uh, of course, we've been in the last days since the book of Acts. So, you know, nobody knows the day or time. And I can promise you everything that's going on right now in America has nothing to do with the end times. Okay? I'm just telling you. But the time is short. Why do I say that? Because you're only promised a certain amount of years. And then when you're gone, what you've done while you was here, 
whether good or bad, you'll be held accountable for. And why not make an impact now, right? So, uh, so anyway, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie and wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things. That's why, okay, which is the head of even Christ. That's why God put apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers in the church. So that they can perfect us, so that they can grow us up into him in all things pertaining to Christ. It was not for them to have armor bearers to protect them walking through an airport. Right? That happens. It wasn't for them to stand on a platform and say, look at me. It happens. So, it was to perfect the saints. Again, regardless of your position, whether you're a pastor, a prophet, a prophet apostle, evangelist, a teacher, you are still man's servant. So, you know, that's not taught. It's not taught in the church no more. Look at me, I'm the pastor, do as I say. No. Follow me as I follow Christ. Right? Let's do what he does. So, uh, next page. 1 John 2, 4 through 6. He that saith, I know him, and keeps not his commandments, is a liar. Let me say that again for all the church to hear. He that says, I know him, and does not keep his commandments, is a liar. End of story. The truth is not in him. But whoso keeps his word, here's the good part. We're not going to end it on a negative note. But whoso keeps his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that says, that says he abides in him ought himself also so to walk even as he walked. Can I make this statement? I heard this statement. I read this statement the other day. Jesus did not come to make you a better person. He did not come for you to live your best life now. Okay? He came so that you could die and have his life. It's not the message you hear from behind the pulpit. Say that again, brother. Jesus did not come to make you a better person. That's harsh, ain't it? That's hard to swallow. He came so that you could die and have his life. Again, I could go way over here off on that, but we're not going to. Uh, you know, I, I was thinking about John here. John the Beloved. John that was close to Jesus. John that said, Jesus said, uh, Mary, behold your son. John, John, behold your mother. I mean, this is how close John was to Jesus, right? And John made, John wrote this and said, He that said, says, I know him, and keeps not his commandments as a liar, and the truth is not in him. Think about it. This is John. The same John that they tried to kill in a vat of oil on the Isle of Patmos. The same one that, they, that wrote Revelations. The same one that walked with Jesus for three and a half years. The same one that was close to him. So he knew what he was talking about, right? He said, look, if you say you know him, do what he did. Because if you don't, you are a liar. Alright? So, 1 John 3, 2. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. 1 John 4, 17. Herein is our love made perfect, <clears throat> that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. Go ahead. It's just so much. I mean, I know. <laughs> if you can just wrap your head around, like, we are a son of God, 
we have been born again, we've been born from above. We have the nature of God on the inside of us. We have the Holy Spirit on the inside of us. We have the blood of Jesus. We have the Word of God. We've been given a measure of faith. Like, we literally, He's taken out every single excuse, and it starts with sonship. Yeah. Like, we are, think about that. We are... Come on up here and teach. Sons of God. <laughs> like, I'm That's just, so good. Know, I know. I, you know, the Bible says, I, I was reading this morning in Romans, it says the righteousness of faith speaks. So I think it's important because Jesus would often say, I'm the Son of God, the light of the world. I think it's important that we speak our identity. Right. You know, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Not based upon my works, but based upon what Jesus right. did. You know, I am a Son of God. I am the light of the world. And the salt of the earth, you know, to really, because we were, I guess, in the world and of the world for so long, now we have right. to, this has been made perfect, and now we've got to keep this, get this, you know, up to right. track by speaking the word, you know, speaking who we are. We, we should get up every morning and say, I am God's son, man's servant, and the devil's master. That should be well, uh, every day. I am God's son. I am God's son. And, and that should be... Man, that, it, there is so much. There's, I think I'm going to write that on the board up there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's so good. But but you're right. And, and again, I go back to this statement that Jesus did not come to make you a better person. He came so that you could die and have his life. Make you brand new. Like never right, existed. right. It's it's no longer I that lives, but Christ that lives in me. And 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 the church has not gotten that. The our church, value is in that. Right. Like our value is <clears throat> the blood of Jesus made me a son. That means that's the greatest value, and, and, and because our whole life, you know, we've had people. It might have been a, a, a parent. It might have been a spouse. It might have been you know, peers in school telling you you're no good, you're never going to succeed, you're a piece of crap, you know, so on and so forth, and just reduced your value to nothing. Right. But now you have the blood of Jesus. Like you said, we've been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible seed, and we have been made holy, we have been made righteous, we have been made son, and not by anything that we've done, not by our works, lest right. any man should boast, right. but by his works. Right. And Jesus says you're valuable. Jesus says you have a future. Jesus says you have his life. Jesus says you're a son. And now, because you are a son, you can go out and do exactly what I did. Yeah. If the church would just grab onto that message, it would look a lot different than what it looks like now. You know, as, as Paul said, to die is gain, to live is Christ. That's a bold statement. Mm. To live is Christ. Yeah. But for us to live is to have a something new. For us to live is to do this. For us to, Paul said, to live is Christ. Whether they stone me to death and my partner has to raise me from the dead, whether they put me in prison and I got an 18 by 18 hole to look up out of, I'm going to praise and sing. Silas, I'm going to sing. You pray. When I get through singing, you sing and I'll pray. Uh, you know, right. Uh, look, to live is Christ. Whether they whip me and tear my back up, to live is Christ. I mean, when you think about stoning, Paul was stoned to death. They didn't pick up little river rocks that you skip across the water. They picked up boulders, right? They picked up big rocks. They didn't stone people to death with little bitty rocks. It was big rocks. And Paul was stoned. Worse. Worse. Huh? I don't know what would be worse. Right. A bunch of little bitty ones. Are. So, I, I, I mean, when, when, you, when you think about where we're at as Christians, again, he hurt my feelings. That must be the persecution God was talking about. No. That has nothing to do with it. So it, it's it's a big difference of where the church was and where the church is today. Yeah, reminds me of that scripture in Hebrews. He says, "You haven't even suffered under blood." 
Yeah. You're like you're, they won't let you buy food in the market, and you're already, you know, you got to hold fast your con- your your faith into the end, your confidence yeah. to the end. Yeah. So. John 14, 12 and 13. Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believes on me. All right. Who is he? That's us, right? Believer, believer, yeah. He. Okay. He that believes on me, the works that I do shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Amen, that's pretty, it's hard to get around that. Right. You know, in Hebrews it calls, it gives a definition of an evil heart. And it says the evil heart is, is the heart of unbelief. Yeah. And I believe it's a, I believe he's talking about a mindset. You know, so if you've got a mindset and you don't believe, I believe that can disconnect you from seeing this. What's keeping us, why aren't we seeing this? Right. It's because you don't believe. Right. You are living what you believe. Let me say that again. You are living what you believe. Oh no, but I believe what the Bible says. No, you may agree with what the Bible says. But until you're living what the Bible says, you don't believe it. Now that's a hard pill to swap. When I heard that the first time, I was like, wait a minute. You just stepped all over me. But then I got to looking and realized, you know what, that's true. Uh, E.W. Ken- Kenyon called it mental assent. Yeah. When you agree with it, if you ain't walking it out, it's just mental assent. So when it, it, I, I wrote this statement this, down this morning when I was looking at this before I got here. When Jesus said, I say unto you, he that believes on me, the works that I do shall he do also. If you are not doing what Jesus did, then you don't really believe. Again, you're living what you believe. So, uh, what kind there's no of condemnation it? in that. It's just like, yeah. right. just keep. Right. Like, I like Todd White. We listened to a lot of his, what he talked about, you know, how he started seeing results and he basically said like the first 900 folks he prayed for he didn't see anything right but he kept praying because he's like i know what the word says right now there was probably a process going on where holy spirit was doing some tweaking and that's you know, right of course he's getting in the word mind renewals going on um but he? at some point it clicked so don't give up is what i'm saying just yeah. because you don't see it don't give up don't get discouraged because faith comes by hearing right so the more you get into this word, the more you read this word, the more you get to know Jesus, the more, you know. And I get what you're saying. Like, if you're not doing this, then you don't really believe it. I, I get it. A lot of times we, we walk in our experience. There's been many times where my wife and I have been talking about something that we believe God's, you know, wants to do and will do and what his word says. And then, yeah, we, we bring up, well, what about this? And there's things that we don't have an explanation for. You know, why did this person die? Why did this, we, you know, we pray, we believe, you know, and all, and all this kind of stuff. And I, we, just, we just agree. We say, hey, let's not look back, you know. Right. You know, uh, we, we were watching um, another Creflo Dollar, and he was talking about being in a place of rest. And he was talking about get, putting your faith out on the field, you know. I guess he likes football. So he's talking about, get your <laughs> Get your faith out on the field. He said, what's the worst that could happen? The person goes to be with Jesus? But keep your faith. Don't don't bring your don't put your faith on the bench. Keep it out there. Keep yeah. it in the field. And I really think this is, you know, what you're encouraging. And, and you're That's just right. saying the standard is the standard is not what man thinks, is not what man's been taught, but the standard is what Jesus did and even greater things than those. Right. So keep pressing in, keep believing, keep learning, keep reading your word until those things are manifest in your life. And don't give up. Keep your faith out on the playing field right. until you see the manifestation. Like don't go, oh, it's been a month, or oh, that right. person died. <laughs> you know, you, you got to keep, keep moving. you got to keep your faith out on the field. Yeah. You, 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 you grow as you go. And you go as you grow. So if you're not going, you're not growing. You will never grow 
just sitting in a church. You never will. You'll get knowledge, but to what end? Big deal. So you know the word. Yeah. So you know what Genesis says. All you know from Genesis. So what? Knowledge puffs up. Puffs yeah, up. knowledge puffs up. You know, Todd White learned this. He was actually learned up under Curry Blake. So, uh, go ahead. You talked about John the Beloved, and probably about a month, four or five weeks ago, we were talking about pillars and how God will begin to do a work in you. And we use John as one of the examples because he started out as a son of thunder. Huh, yeah. You know, but then you see him as the beloved. Yeah. You know, so there's a process as you continue to yeah. follow him and spend time with him. And one of the things we do is we encourage people to pray and primarily in the spirit and just allow the Holy Spirit to do that work inside of you, you know, to become that pillar where you can go out. And, yeah. You know, so. Don't, there was one thing, I want to encourage you. Don't let where you're at now in the Lord stop you from doing what Jesus did. Whether you know the scriptures or not, you have a testimony. Amen. And your testimony is powerful. Yes. Nobody can debate you on your testimony. Nobody can call you a liar, say, no, that didn't happen. That's your testimony. You know what Jesus did for you, and you have that. Amen. At least that. And you would be surprised. Listen, we... Man, there's so much I could tell you. The the we ain't just trying to win people to the Lord one time, okay? We want to get a person free, a whole person free, and we want to disciple them to walk in the kingdom, to live in the kingdom. That's discipleship. It's not one and done. I got born again. Big deal. When was that? Thirty years ago. Well, you don't look nothing like it now. You know, you know, what, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Big deal. We want to get a person free, made whole, and walking in the kingdom. Yeah. That's that's what Jesus called us to do. So, uh, uh, I'm not gonna get in the next section yet. Uh, killing sacred cows. We're gonna we're gonna jump in there next week. It is good. Uh, we like beef around here. Mm -hmm. Huh? Yeah. Beef on the grill. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so we'll, we'll get into this next week. I know it's uh, four minutes till time for and me just, to go to work. Just, go ahead. To touch, just to touch on you, it says so nobody misunderstands you. It is a big deal to be born again. Right, but right. I, you know, if, yeah. if, it's been th if it's been 30 years and there's no manifestation of your walk, like walking like Jesus... Saying that little prayer may not have been, you know, you might need to go back to the drawing board. And we, we say that all the time. If, if you don't, if you don't, because saying a yeah. sinner's prayer, uh, if you're not in faith, if it doesn't invoke change, because what happens there is the new birth. The old man is taken away, right. the heart of stone, you're given a heart of flesh, and he writes his word on your heart. And if you don't see a manifestation of that in 30 years, but you better... Right. Yeah. You better check yourself. Saying yeah. that little prayer when yeah. you were six years old on Sunday was, was not it. That right. is not salvation. Right. Yeah. Thank you for clearing. Thank you for yes, correcting sir. me in that. Yeah, I, yeah. yeah. I did not mean to make light of being born again. Yeah. It is a big deal. The problem with that is I got saved. That's what people say. Yeah, but you're not living saved. You're not acting like you're saved. You don't look like you've been saved. So, yeah, it is a big deal to be born. Thank you for that correction. Yeah, yeah. Woo, I got man. you back. <laughs> yeah. So, all right, let's stand up. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. And, and uh, I got to go to work. Thank you, God. <laughs> Father, I, I thank you thank again you, for this great opportunity. I thank you for these men, for their hearts and minds being open. I thank you for this word, Father. I, I pray that, that even though it was a harsh word this morning, Father, it's your truth. It's, it's truth and it makes us mad at first, but then it changes us. And I thank you for that, Father. And I, I thank you that, that these men are blessed. I thank you that they're walking in you. And I thank you that, that, that your word says the steps of a good man are ordered by you. And I thank you, Father, that they will take those steps today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, yeah. Great. Very good. <laughs> Thank you, John. See? See, we all need correction. <laughs>
How you doing, sir? I'm doing good, man. That was uh, it was very intense.